In the vast maritime world, where colossal ships carrying hundreds of thousands of tons of steel, cargo, and powerful engines glide across the oceans, a basic yet rarely asked question arises. What holds them still when they need to stop? The obvious answer is the anchor. However, if you think an anchor is merely a gigantic lump of metal dropped to the seabed, you've missed one of the most refined achievements of maritime physics and engineering. To truly understand the real strength of a moored vessel, we must not only look at the anchor itself, but also explore the history of its creation, the complex structure of its chain, the road or road, and the beautiful mathematical concept hidden within that chain. The history of the anchor is a slow but meaningful evolution, one that has progressed alongside the history of shipbuilding. Thousands of years ago, when humans first ventured out to sea in rudimentary boats, the need for mooring already existed. The earliest anchors weren't metal. They were natural materials, heavy rocks or sandbags. The ancient Egyptians and Phoenicians often used woven baskets or leather sacks filled with stones. Their effectiveness relied entirely on weight alone, meaning they could only hold vessels in calm waters and light winds. A major turning point came when sailors realized that better holding power came from hooking into the seabed rather than simply weighing down on it. Around 2,000 years ago, the Greeks and Romans began developing wooden anchors fitted with a heavy lead stock at the bottom to increase weight, and a crossbar, the stock, to ensure the anchor always flipped an embedded one arm into the seabed. This marked the birth of the stocked anchor design, a design that dominated for millennia. It introduced not only the downward force, weight, but also the gripping force, bite, allowing safer anchoring in more weather conditions. As larger sailing ships emerged and later steam-powered steel vessels, the need for stronger and more manageable anchors became urgent. The stocked anchor was bulky and difficult to stow on deck. By the late 19th century, the stockless anchor had been invented, the very type used on most modern commercial ships today. Its main feature is its swiveling flukes, allowing it to be easily drawn into the ship's hawse pipe at the ball. More importantly, this design optimized its self-burying capability. Its job was not to be heavy, but to hook perfectly. When it touched the seabed and was pulled horizontally, the shovel-shaped flukes would dig deep into the ground, creating immense holding power. Furthermore, the market value and actual weight of modern anchors demonstrate their significance. For example, a single anchor weighing about 23 tons can be used for a large vessel. Designing, manufacturing, and transporting them are no simple tasks. The global anchor market in 2024 was valued at approximately 573 million U.S. dollars and is projected to reach around 704.75 million U.S. dollars by 2031. This proves that there is a massive industrial chain behind this seemingly simple heavy object. For a super tanker or container ship, the anchor is only a small part of the mooring system. The true secret lies in the harmony between the anchor, the chain, and physics. If the anchor is the hook, the chain, usually a massive steel chain, is the unsung hero. On a large ship, this is an extremely strong steel chain stretching hundreds of meters long. Each individual link can weigh around 160 kilograms, heavier than a grand piano. Although the anchor itself is very heavy, for example, up to about 23,000 kilograms, equivalent to over 15 average cars, its job is relatively simple to hold the end of the chain in place. But the real holding power comes from the combined total weight of both the chain and the anchor, which can reach hundreds of tons on a large vessel. For instance, 
One report noted, anchor weight 23.0 tons, chain length 770 meters, for a super large ship, cult of sea. This physical configuration forms the first line of defense against two invisible enemies, wind and current. The anchor's effectiveness depends heavily on the seabed type, rocky seabed, completely unusable. The anchor will simply slide like skating on ice, sand. Better, the anchor can dig in, but firm grip points are harder to find. Mud or cohesive clay, ideal. The anchor embeds and grips like a claw, creating maximum holding power. Here lies the magic of anchoring. When dropping anchor, the captain doesn't just lower the anchor, he releases far more chain than necessary to reach the bottom. The goal isn't a straight line from ship to anchor, but to let a large portion of the chain lie flat on the seabed, forming a graceful curve called the catenary. The immense weight of hundreds of meters of chain lying on the seabed generates enormous friction. It acts like a gigantic paperweight, resisting horizontal pull, a perfect shock absorber. When wind or waves push the ship, they don't pull directly on the anchor. Instead, they try to lift the heavy chain off the seabed. The entire energy of that jerk is consumed by lifting the chain's weight. The catenary stretches out, absorbing the shock like a giant rubber band. By the time the pulling force reaches the anchor, it has been reduced to a gentle tug. Without this catenary curve, any strong jerk would instantly yank the anchor out of the seabed. The catenary is the secret formula of stability. Anchoring is an art, and raising the anchor is a process that demands precision. How do you lift an anchor designed never to come loose, attached to a chain weighing as much as a blue whale? You don't just pull, you maneuver. The ship uses its main engine to move slowly forward, directly above the anchor's position. The windlass, a massive machine at the bow, reels in the chain. The ship's engine moves the vessel, so the windlass only needs to lift a vertical weight of the chain, not drag the ship horizontally. When the ship is directly above the anchor, the chain is pulled vertically upward. This vertical pull creates a clever lever mechanism. It raises the end of the shank, using it as a lever to break the flukes free from the seabed's grip. In today's digital maritime era, measuring the anchor chain length no longer relies solely on paint and the crew's eyesight. On modern ships, UHF, ultra-high frequency, RFID systems have become the precise and reliable solution for real-time measurement of how many shackles have been paid out into the water. On each marked link, usually the canter link, the red one, manufacturers or ship engineers attach a high-pressure resistant RFID tag encased in corrosion-proof epoxy. As the chain passes through the hawse pipe, a UHF RFID antenna mounted near the pipe emits radio waves. Each time a tagged link passes through the scanning zone, it responds with its unique tag ID. The RFID receiver logs the signal and automatically calculates the total number of shackles released. When examining the massive weight and complex design of anchors and chains, we must also consider their economic and strategic value. An anchor weighing dozens of tons, a chain stretching hundreds of meters, and the mechanical windlass system, all are indispensable equipment for operating a large ship. The global anchor market in 2024 reached about 573 million US dollars with stable projected growth. Designing, manufacturing, inspecting, and installing anchors for large ships, container ships, oil tankers, super tankers, require advanced engineering, specialized materials, and rigorous safety standards. Therefore, the anchor is not just a heavy object, it is an essential fixed asset, a strategic device ensuring the safety of the ship and its cargo, minimizing risks of drifting, collision, cargo loss, 
and property damage. The next time you see a gigantic ship peacefully anchored in a harbor, know that it isn't merely sitting there. It's actively engaged in a delicate and complex dance of balance. It's held not just by a heavy object, but by a graceful curve, a hidden law of physics, and the distributed strength of a massive chain. The evolution of the anchor, from a simple stone to a sophisticated steel tool, teaches humanity an important lesson. In seafaring, strength lies not only in size, but in the understanding and skillful application of fundamental physical principles.